This is Spider-Man and the X-Men in Arcade's Revenge for the Sega Genesis. A 1993 release from Flying Edge and Acclaim. Two names that aren't associated with spectacular Sega Genesis releases. And Spider-Man and the X-Men in Arcade's Revenge is an interesting release. For starters, the title on the packaging and the cartridge and the game just says Spider-Man X-Men. And it's not until you get to a sub-menu that you see the entire title. So, not surprisingly, you start off playing as Spider-Man, who has to collect a bunch of joysticks in order to make his way to Arcade's Hideout, where he has captured the X-Men. Or at least, some of the X-Men. Why does Spider-Man have to rescue them? There's like 40 X-Men. You'd think he would just get on a payphone or a rotary dial telephone or cell phone the size of a small car and call Professor X to send over Beast and Colossus, but he doesn't. Instead, you end up playing as Spider-Man, Wolverine, Storm, Gambit, and Cyclops through Arcade's Bizarre Fantasy Realm or something. And bizarre is the word of the day, kids. Bizarre. Not to be confused with buzzar. That's a very different word. Bizarre, as in strange. Out of the ordinary. Just look at the level design in this game. Now, to Spider-Man and the X-Men Arcade's Revenge's credit, that's a weird title. This does have excellent controls. It's an extremely playable 2D platformer. Each of the X-Men and Spider-Man have their own attacks and two levels apiece, which they must complete in your own order. And each of them look like little short stunted collectible versions of the X-Men, don't they? They're adorable. This is mediocre side-scrolling action platforming at its best. Were it not for the weird factor, X-Men and the Spider-Man Arcade's Revenge in would be a very forgettable game. But as it is, it's interesting, and you can play as five superheroes and the controls aren't bad. Spider-X and the Man-Men's Arcade's Revenge He's not one of the best games on the Genesis, but for those who like the off-center releases that are kind of quirky, this one is for you, but I can't recommend it for everyone. It's, it's not that refined, um, but it does have lengthy levels and some solid action platforming challenges, as well as a nice variety of super villain end bosses. Let's take a look at Gambit's stage which is one of the weirdest of all. It's like they had five different games and just decided at the last minute to tape them all together. In the arcades, X-Spider, Men Man's Revenge. I kept getting distracted in this level trying to figure out what the background is. It's like skulls and Roman denarii or something. <laughs> Did they have this left over from an Aliens game they didn't finish? You can choose the order that you play through the game and combined with decent controls and some challenging platforming and boss battles, Spider-Man and the X-Men in Arcade's Revenge, that's the title, is a worthy purchase if you can find it affordably, which you should be able to, and like games that defy the ordinary. A big thanks to our friend Evrado from Houston, Texas for donating this game to the show. Thank you, he also sent along Wolverine Adamantium's Rage. And it's being shown here on the comic book and toy themed two week extravaganza on Classic Game Room celebrating the launch of CGR Toys and CGR Comics channels. Spider-Man and the X-Men together unified as one. Battling evil, fighting the norm. What a weird game.